Next item of business is consideration of more motion 14602 in the name of Bill Kidd on the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee 6, Report 2018, Session 5, Complaint against Annie Wells, MSP. Can I invite any member who wishes to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Bill Kidd to speak to and move the motion on behalf of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Mr Kidd, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. The details of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointment Committee's consideration of the complaint made against Annie Wells MSP are set out in the report published by committee on the 1st of November. The report includes a copy of the investigation by the Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life in Scotland. In summary, the complaint was that Annie Wells sought political advantage by making advanced public comment on the Equalities and Human Rights Committee's report on prisoner voting in Scotland. The Parliament has made it clear previously that when a committee deems information to be confidential, notably in relation to a committee report, it should remain confidential until any agreed publication date. The Equalities and Human Rights Committee had agreed that the report um, in question be subject to an embargo until the 14th of May. However, comments on the report attributed to Annie Wells were included in a press release issued on the 11th of May and subsequently reported in a newspaper on the same day. The Commissioner therefore concluded that Annie Wells had breached paragraphs 12, 15 and 16 of section 7 of the confidentiality rules contained in the Code of Conduct for MSPs. The Standards and Public Appointments Committee noted Annie Wells' explanation recorded in the Commissioner's report that her remarks merely reflected her party's long-standing position and had been prompted by inquiries from the press. However, her comments referred to the committee's deliberations and expressed the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party's dissent with the committee's report. This is in breach of the Code of Conduct. When an MSP discloses the details of an unpublished committee report, particularly to record dissent, it seriously undermines the impact of the report and is considered deeply disrespectful to fellow committee members and to everyone involved in the inquiry. Any MSP who finds themselves in a position of uncertainty can take advice from committee or standards clerks before responding to inquiries in order to satisfy themselves that any actions they wish to take do not breach the Code of Conduct. The Standards, Procedures and Appointments Committee agreed unanimously with the findings in fact and conclusions of the Commissioner. The Committee also agreed unanimously to recommend to Parliament a sanction which it considered to be proportionate and reasonable. The Committee considered previous breaches of the Code of Conduct of a similar nature and agreed that the sanctions against Annie Well should mirror the sanctions given for those breaches. Therefore, the committee agreed to recommend to Parliament that Annie Wells MSP be excluded from all meetings of the Parliament and its committees for the first five sitting days immediately after the motion is agreed to. Presiding officer, I move that the Parliament notes the sixth report 2018 session five of the Standards and Public Appointments Committee complaint against Annie Wells MSP, SP paper 408, and agrees to impose the sanction recommended in the report that Annie Wells MSP be excluded from all meetings of the Parliament and all meetings of its committees for the first five sitting days after this motion is agreed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Kidd. And I call on Morris Golden. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Scottish Conservatives accept that Annie Wells was in breach of what we believe to be a technical charge. However, we believe that the procedure was not in the public interest. In fact, the process we are involved in is not helping one single person in Scotland, the people we are all here to represent. Moreover, the proposed sanction is disproportionate to the offence. The complaint itself is regrettable and utterly unhelpful, apart from scoring political points. I also want to put on record I want to put on record that Annie Wells did not seek or gain anything.
from the remarks she made. The media had already published stories and Annie merely commented on those news reports which were by then in the public domain. In fact, the substitution of one word in Annie's statement could have made the difference between Annie receiving the proposed sanction before us and having no case to answer. In the wake of the news of this judgment, Annie Wells has been subjected to, frankly, abhorrent online abuse. This type of abuse is aimed increasingly at the female MSPs sitting behind me, and I will let you make your own judgments on why they have been singled out. These attacks are a disgrace, and none of us should ever accept that they come with the territory. Annie has been brought before the Ethical Commissioner and Standards Committee and is potentially facing a similar sanction to those MSPs who this Parliament have previously determined have deliberately and willfully leaked reports. Annie did not do this. Annie would not do this. It is not in her nature. She would never neglect her privileged position of public office. Annie is a proud advocate of her Glasgow constituents as well as many other important issues she stands up for. Annie is a responsible parliamentarian and an asset to this democratic institution. <laughs> Presiding officer, that's why after careful deliberation, we will be voting against the sanction today and I invite others to do the same. Thank you very much. And the question on this motion will be put at decision time to which we now turn. And there are three questions. The first question is that motion 14666 in the name of Nicola Sturgeon on a motion of remembrance be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next question is that motion 14665 in the name of Ash Denham on the Prescription Scotland Bill be agreed. And in this case, we do actually have to have a vote because it's an act of parliament. So can members please press their buttons now. The result of the vote on motion 14665 in the name of Ash Denham is yes, 111. There were zero no votes, there were zero abstentions. The motion is therefore unanimously agreed and the Prescription Scotland Bill is passed. <laughs> the final question is that motion 14602 in the name of Bill Kidd on complaint against Annie Wells be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a division. Members be cast their votes now. The result of the vote on motion 14602 in the name of Bill Kidd is yes, 84, no, 27. There were no abstentions and the motion is therefore agreed. Point of order, Mr Stevenson. Uh, the presiding officer, in today's uh, members debate at 2.30, there was considerable opprobrium and repeated uh, comments about the absence of two of the government's ministers uh, from responding to the debate. Uh, if it were to be the case that the members making those comments were aware of section 7 of the ministerial code, which governs the participation of ministers in uh, matters that relate to their own constituency, would it have been uh, 
a lack of respect and courtesy to members. Now, just to be clear, presiding officer, I have no suggestion that the members were aware of the requirements uh, of the ministerial code in relation to my two colleagues, but it would be helpful if you could guide us as to future conduct of members in relation to a matter of this kind. Thank you very much, Mr Stevenson. Uh, and I was in the chair, so I did hear all of the contributions, including your own measured contribution to that debate. Uh, in, this case, in this case, the ministerial code is not a matter for my interpretation. It's a matter for each individual member to make themselves aware or otherwise. In this case, although the attacks were political, they were not uh, disrespectful. Uh, and in that case, there's no point of order for me to rule on. And on that note, I close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>